Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk about cellular senescence and its relationship with Alzheimer's disease. So pretty much I recently read this Nature Review article that discussed this interaction as the egg and the chicken scenario. So in this video I'll break down both what cellular senescence is and Alzheimer's disease is and then try and describe or at least explain what we currently think may be the link between the two and where more research needs to be focused on in the future. So Alzheimer's disease is a progressive decline in memory that ultimately results in a loss of daily function and death. And so currently around 35 million people are living with Alzheimer's disease and that number is expected to increase to 135 million by 2050. And so Alzheimer's disease is the most common neurodegenerative disease and so a lot of research has been conducted to try and understand how the disease manifests and therefore how we can best be able to treat and to prevent the development of Alzheimer's disease and its symptoms. To be able to do this though, you need to be able to understand the molecular characteristics and the processes involved in the progression of Alzheimer's disease, which is easier said than done. So what's our current understanding of the development of Alzheimer's disease? Well, there are two key hallmarks that kind of characterise the presence of Alzheimer's disease. And that is firstly, degeneration of a region of the brain referred to as the hippocampus. And within this region, you see an accumulation of so-called amyloid beta plaques that are found uh, outside of a cell. And you see these neurofibrillary tau tangles inside a cell. And so these are both protein aggregates. And firstly, the loss of proteostasis and accumulation of protein aggregation is one of the hallmarks of aging, which given that Alzheimer's disease is an age-related disease, that is a good indication as to the molecular underpinning of the disease, but it still doesn't really give us much information as to how the disease develops. And this is heightened by the fact that you can see abnormal tau within the brain tissue of 98% of unaffected individuals. And likewise, you can see the presence of amyloid beta in patients that also don't have the uh, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And so another way that you can try and understand the causes of a disease is by looking at patients who are at greater risk of getting certain diseases because they contain certain genetic mutations. And so this class of Alzheimer's disease is referred to as familial Alzheimer's disease. And this is in contrast to sporadic Alzheimer's disease, which is caused by a combination of lifestyle, environmental, and probably also genetic factors. The unfortunate reality though, is that we still don't fully understand what causes Alzheimer's disease. And this is somewhat reflected in the many failures seen for Alzheimer's disease treatments within clinical trials. Interestingly though, in human patients, there is also an increase in the presence of senescent cells within the brain during aging. And moreover, there has been some pretty recent studies done in mice models of Alzheimer's disease, whereby the removal of senescent cells helps to reduce the Alzheimer's disease related phenotype that you see in mice. So before we go any further, we just need to recap what is cellular senescence. Well, cellular senescence is best described through its two major hallmarks, the first of which is the arrest of the cell cycle, so the cell stops dividing, and the second major hallmark is the secretion of various factors, including signaling molecules and inflammatory factors, and this is referred to as the senescence-associated secretory phenotype. So given that increasing age increases the number of senescent cells, and also that increasing age increases the pathology and the risk potential for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Is it possible then that senescent cells could contribute to the pathology of Alzheimer's disease or could the pathology of Alzheimer's disease induce senescence? So we'll begin by looking at some of the experimental evidence and then we'll come to some conclusion about this crosstalk between senescence and Alzheimer's disease. So the brain isn't just composed of neurons, it's also composed of glial cells. And these cells include astrocytes, microglia and oligodendrocytes and the precursors for these oligodendrocytes, OPC cells. And the progenitor cells are the major proliferative cells found within the brain, whereas the neurons themselves are generally post-mitotic, so they don't divide. And the microglia are considered more immune cells of the brain. 
um, play a key role in kind of pruning and managing the neurons. And so the reason that I just mentioned this is because the research papers so show that these different types of neuronal cells can become senescent. And whether or not it's just due to a lack of studies and it's just what's been reported, but what's been shown is that the tau pathology seen in Alzheimer's disease has been related to senescence within microglia and astrocytes, whereas amyloid beta plaques have been associated with senescent OPC cells. So, I mean, that's interesting just to point out because it suggests that maybe different glial cell types are differentially susceptible to entering a senescent state. So since 2018, several publications have highlighted the clearance of senescent cells as a new potential therapeutic approach to Alzheimer's disease associated neurodegeneration. So in this first research paper that came out in 2018, they showed that clearance of senescent astrocytes and microglia in a mouse model of tauopathy. So this is when you have the gene that encodes the tau protein mutated, which makes it more prone to aggregation. And it's just one of the ways that, well, it's one of the mouse models that are used to try and understand Alzheimer's disease pathology. And so by clearing these senescent cells in this mouse model, it alleviated the formation of these neurofibrillary tau tangles. And it had also a consequent improvement in cognition. And so the way that they were able to remove these senescent cells is by using a genetic reporter referred to as the ink attack reporter. And so this cleared cells that had very high expressions of P16, which is a protein that accumulates within senescent cells. So the fact that the removal of senescent cells reduced the Alzheimer's disease phenotype suggests that the senescent cells were playing a role in the initiation and progression of this tau-mediated disease, suggesting that here senescent cells could be a potential cause of Alzheimer's disease pathology. And this is further supported by the fact that they saw the accumulation of these P16 positive senescent glial cells before they saw the deposition of these neurofibrillary tau tangles. And so similar results were seen within the second 2018 paper, tau protein aggregation is associated with cellular senescence in the brain. And so similarly here they used different Alzheimer's disease transgenic mouse models and they found that the presence of neurofibrillary tau tangles, but not the amyloid beta plaques, display a senescence-like phenotype. And they showed that by using senolytics and removing the, well, the senescent cells, they found that there was a reduction of these neurofibrillary tau tangles. And so both papers, although they show evidence of removing senescent cells and reducing the Alzheimer's disease pathology, suggesting that senescent cells are a cause of the pathology. Especially in this last paper I just showed you, it also suggests that the presence of this Alzheimer's disease pathology can also potentially induce the further production of senescent cells. And so there definitely seems to be a crosstalk and it's more about what is the signal that induces the cell to become senescent in the first place? Or what is the signal that induces this protein aggregation in tau? Is it the senescent cells or is it some additional factor that's actually, you know, inducing both of them? And this question still hasn't really been solved. Even in this more recent 2019 study, senolytic therapy alleviates amyloid beta associated oligodendrocyte progenitor cell senescence and cognitive deficits in an Alzheimer's disease model. And so here they show that the senescent OPC cells accumulate around amyloid plaque deposition in samples of mice and human brains with Alzheimer's disease. And in the study as well, they also used senolytics, this time the combination of dasatinib and quercetin. And what that did was reduce the presence of these senescent OPC cells. And they consequently saw reduced amyloid beta plaque loads and improved cognition. And just to clarify, the use of the senolytics was within the mouse model. And so one way that we can further tease apart this cause and consequence between the two is by trying to understand what is this trigger that is inducing senescence in these different neuronal cell types. And so one way of doing this is to go back to different genetic variants that predispose individuals to develop Alzheimer's disease and to look at what those genes are doing within a cell. And so just to name two genes, 
One genetic variant associated with Alzheimer's disease is BIN1. And this, or the protein encoded by this gene, regulates senescence activation or apoptosis in response to genotoxic stress by regulating the stabilization of DNA. And another gene is ADAMTS4, which is a component of this secretory phenotype of senescent cells. And so it's possible that individuals carrying variants in these two genes have a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease, potentially due to some interaction of these genes with senescence development. An alternative idea is to look at pathologies within Alzheimer's disease that occurs before you get the presence of these plaques and protein aggregates, as we know that senescent cells can accumulate before these even arise. And so one early pathological event in Alzheimer's disease is the loss of myelin or neuron cells. And so myelin is an insulating sheath that surrounds neuron cells and it's deposited mainly by the oligodendrocytes. And so when the myelin gets lost and fragmented, it's then the role of the microglia to clear this myelin debris and secrete signaling factors that can then promote the differentiation of these OPC cells to become oligodendrocytes to try and to remyelinate, if that's even a word, the neurons. And so one thought is that if the accumulation of myelin debris is greater than the microglial's ability to degrade the fragments, they can end up becoming senescent and release these pro-inflammatory factors. And that could have the adverse consequence of one, reducing the capability of these microglia to remove further uh, fragments, but also potentially to reduce the function of these oligodendrocytes that are also in close proximity. And so increased damage and a reduced capability of microglial cells could be the cause of senescence in both the microglial cells themselves and also the APC cells. And then how this relates back to the AD pathology of these tau aggregates and amyloid beta plaques is then a little bit less clear because these plaques are typically found within the neurons, not within the glial cells. And so having a loss of proteostasis or ability to remove these myelin fragments within the microglial cells um, doesn't really explain why you would lose the capability of removing the plaques. But actually, honestly, I don't really know. This isn't really my area of expertise. So if anyone has any ideas um, or has any other literature that you could recommend, I'm just interested. Um, But yeah, that's pretty much what I got up to with this review bottom line is the answer is just not known in terms of resolving the chicken and the egg scenario and I think it's probably just going to be a multifactorial process with a combination of inflammation damage and reduced um, repair pathways so to speak and who knows what else is involved probably different genetic risk variants as well probably are playing a part but the reality is is trying to understand this is it is going to be really important for trying to develop treatments and therapies for the increasing number of people who unfortunately uh, will get Alzheimer's disease. So on that kind of sad note, I hope you have learned something and as always, thanks for listening.